live and three two <clears throat> go grand rising to everyone and welcome welcome to the daily huddle i am chase still gray your host for today along with my brother sorel Quiton. i just i like saying it that way no disrespect to you i just i love that last name uh <laughs> and uh <clears throat> as we always do to start out just a little you know bring a little light to the to the um program today i'm gonna do something different i'm gonna give you a quote today instead of a joke this by far has got to be my favorite quote in the entire world. I say it all the time. <clears throat> it's a deep quote, but I promise you'll take it with you. It's a Mark Twain quote. And the quote is, forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. Let's play the video. Yes, here we are once again on the amazing Daily Huddle. And uh, I'm going to put that quote in the chat because I think it's one we need in our backpacks for life. So that's why I wanted to drop it on you. Thank you so much for joining us once again on the Magnificent Daily Huddle. And we have one of my greatest friends uh, with us today, Mr. Daniel Johnson. We will get to him in a moment. But, excuse me. Ooh. Before we do, I want to uh, speak to some of our people. We had just a few people and now we have all the great people here i love it i love it i love it who am i going to speak to first today let's go with mm, sophia sophia are you there she is not take two let's go with carmen grand rising carmen yes good yeah. morning, good morning. <laughs> I knew she was gonna come in like that. I knew it. Beautiful day. I, I'm doing my exercise. The first thing in the morning. I love it, Carmen. Where are you, and who will you hug today? I am here now. Nice. Present forever. Wow, forever. I like that about you. Present forever. And today, I'm the more loving person in the planet to hug our beautiful planet we all our heart and yes. pray for it yes i knew you would take it to that level thank you so much <laughs> i appreciate you so much next up sheree are you there sheree is she not okay no problem let's go to ron Ron, are you there with us? Of course I am. Okay, listen to that voice. Of Mr. course Delio. I am. Of Mr. course Delio. I am. Delio, though, only when I can. I like that. I like that. What you got, brother? How are you? And what are you grateful for today, my brother of voiceover magnificence? Today, today I am totally inspirative. I mean, mm. this is... Uh, there's a revelation today that I'm that I am so eager to achieve is rebuilding home. <laughs> so I'm I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. Excellent. Excellent. Really, really excellent. And before we go on with the show, can you just say, Luke, I am your father? You what? <laughs> say that again. Say that again. I, I said before we get into the show, can you just please say, Luke? I am your father. Luke, I am your father. Whoa, this brother right here. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. He got it, doesn't he? He got it. Bro. Oh, man. It's just crazy, man. I, just, I close I, my eyes. I'm in a movie. It's like crazy. James Earl Jones has nothing on you, brother. Woo, this brother yeah. comes in. Not a thing. Not a thing. Oh, hey. man, I just want to give you that, but yeah, that voice is crazy. Hey, man, I, you know, the, the, my thing is I don't want to leave any stone unturned. Well. So I just need some coaching, man. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about that. I, I really am. I really am. 
All right. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. So let's get right into it today. I want to uh, introduce my guest because he's been with us before. One of my best friends on the planet. His name is Daniel Johnson. And this, I mean, <laughs> this resume, this bio is just incredible. I'm just going to give you a piece of it. But I know him as a father, as a husband, as an entrepreneur, a cook, a talented cook, writer, vocalist, musician, creative coach, and consultant who values integrity, transparency, and purpose. I will tell you that, just to talk off book a little bit, Daniel, this sentence in here about Daniel has discovered a unique gift and purpose as an agitator. All right. Now, I'm going to let him unpack that when he comes on, but you can read the rest of the bio on your own. I know <laughs> that when we speak, something's going to come out of the conversation each and every time, each and every time. Think about that. We've never had a conversation where I didn't hang up the phone and go, hmm, wow. <laughs> I to think about that some more. Not once in our whole time. I, I'm, I, I'm telling you, it's the truth. Please welcome to the Daily Huddle, Daniel Johnson. How you doing, my brother? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm here, man. I am here in the place. There you go. Taking yeah. it all in from my brother. I know this is going to be a great conversation because we don't have any bad conversations, number one. And number two, <laughs> when you brought this topic up, do we need to consider boundaries for your boundaries? I thought about it in my mind. And then I said, man, I can't wait to unpack this with you because this is a real concept. And in the realm of health and wellness, when we're thinking about our boundaries with people, with you know uh, entities at work, uh, w- whatever the case is, you had said something to me the other day about um, people making the boundary conversation very linear. Like, this is a specific thing. Like, this is, okay, this is my area. Don't come in here. And that mm-hmm. you felt, no, it's not linear at all. There's other, other um, channels to that. So- Unpack that for us a little bit, if you would. Yeah, well, you know, the question is, um, I should have, I, sh- I thought about this actually this morning uh, mm-hmm. as I was coming down to set up my laptop, I was thinking, oh, uh, maybe the, the real question is, are you weaponizing your boundaries? <laughs> but maybe that's just another sort of tangential question. But, um, you know, we we live in a, a culture that has, begun to talk about boundaries a lot you know over the last decade or so this has been kind of a thing and if you think about the way that uh western society especially has evolved you know we've gone from you have you guys ever heard that saying it takes a village all the time and you know <laughs> it takes a village that usually people are referring to that when it comes to referring to a uh, child rearing um you know raising people up into responsible contributing adults to society. But um, people will say it takes a village, but we don't have villages anymore. Mm, good point. And, you know, I know that a lot of people will say, oh, this person's in my village. But the way that our lives are literally set up, they're not that way. If you, if you go to a real village, there are far fewer boundaries, right? And I'll tell you a quick story. One of the reasons that this came up for me was several months back. um, So our son is five. He hasn't hit kindergarten yet. He goes to kindergarten this coming fall. And he, um, he goes to a Montessori school and he's been in Montessori for most of his preschool years. Mm. And, uh, you know, in Montessori, it's child led learning is what is kind of the, the, the main concept. And uh, we started having a couple of situations where we were correcting him, where we were challenging him about something. And he would say that he needed space. Mm. And it really struck me. And I had to go talk to the teachers about it because I realized, oh, this is very microcosmic of what you see in our culture, which is that as soon as a challenging question comes up or a um, uh, a situation, a scenario that is maybe going to challenge you and then potentially stretch you and then grow you, right? Expand you. You can't be expanded without being stretched, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. as soon as that situation comes up, a lot of people will throw out a boundary. And so we we have begun to use boundaries not as protections for ourselves solely, but also as weapons against other people and sort of... um, 
you know, it's under the guise of protection, but what it's really doing is limiting us. You know, and I saw that in my son because I realized, oh, wow, as soon as we get to this moment where he doesn't want to deal with the consequences of what he's done or what he said, I don't remember what the what the exact thing was, but as soon as he's challenged. Boundaries, look, space, I need space, I need space so he doesn't have to deal with it. So. When we talked about this uh, recently. That's what was on my mind. And I wonder, you know, do people consider this? Like, do you consider when you're when you're creating by now? And let's get this straight. I'm not saying that this that the 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 altruistic version, <laughs> however you want to look at that, of a boundary is not useful. And I'm not even saying that it's not necessary. I'm not arguing that. Um, not stating an opinion on that one way or the other. But what I am saying is that I think it's important for us to consider how it is we're employing that, that idea in our lives, because not only are we limiting ourselves in a lot of cases, but we're limiting the, the ability to grow a village, right? Yeah. Because in a village, things are messy. You know, people are in each other's space. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't always, I mean, you're, in a lot of cultures, you're sleeping right next to somebody else. You're eating together. Your, your hands are getting dirty together. This is what community is. And we have found a way to sterilize community, right? So as soon as we get to the part that where we get messy, where it's going to get dirty, now it's time for a boundary. Interesting. Very interesting. What if I may just ask a, a quick question, what part of your son having that sentence in his artillery came from watching you and your wife, do you think? Do you think he picked that up and said, ooh, I like that? No, they, they taught it to him at school. Oh, they taught it to him. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have said that I was implying oh. it. But they, they, yeah, that was I, the reason I went to talk to the teachers was because I knew that's where he had learned it. Ah, yeah. So, uh, and I, and, and, you know, and again, again, it's not, it's not that it's not useful. Sometimes I think one of the reasons that they employ it is because when a child is in another child's space and, you know, you know, children don't ask permission to play, they just start playing. Right. You. Right. Right. And so, you know, maybe a kid comes up to you and that, that kid wants to play this and you don't, so you're, you know, I need space, I need space. But he was extrapolating it out to use this way. And I know from talking to them that it is one way that they employ it. Right. And, and, and also, and you know this from being a musician too, you know, I find myself uh, many times in a leadership position with my bands. However, when I'm not in a leadership position, there are certain people who will talk to me in a certain way, like mm -hmm. a very demeaning way or very like uh, yeah. Hitler-esque way. Mm -hmm. And if I don't say something right away, they'll think that's okay. They'll be like, yeah, yeah. I just told them such and such and da 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 da, right? So yeah. I had a situation really quickly where I was talking and I was, you know, hanging with a guy on the stage or whatever. And the band leader came over to me and he goes, give me a song. Give me a song. What song do you want to sing? First of all, <laughs> you're the band leader. You tell me what song to sing, but okay. And I was like, uh... Let me sing um, Fly Me to the Moon. No, not that one. I'm singing that one. Give me another one. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me sing. Uh, <laughs> and I gave him a tune. He's like, okay, great. And we started doing the music. Then later on, I couldn't hear in the monitor. He started screaming at me. I said, I really can't hear. Just sing the song. I was like, yo. <laughs> so later on, I went to the office and I spoke to them about it. And they said, oh, he screamed at you. Oh, that guy loves you. Don't worry about that. Hey, he's cool. He calls me all the time to see if you're available. He loves you. I was like, no, you don't understand. I don't want to be screamed at on the stage. I'm, I'm a performer. I go there for light and love and openness. This guy's screaming at me. He goes, no, you don't understand. That's just him. That's just what he does. No, no, you don't understand. I was like, okay. And I walked away like, did I accomplish anything just now? I'm not really sure. Should I have spoken about my boundaries? Should I have not? Because, oh, that guy loves you. That's just him. He's just got like screaming Tourette's. No, what? What's going on? And that yeah. sometimes comes up as an issue because... I watch people. I'm a studier. I watch human interaction every day on so many levels. So I see you way before I'm near you. 
I see, I, I already know what your vibe is to me. Mm-hmm. But in, 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 in what you were saying, like with children, children look at you, they know, they know where you're coming from. They know their ins and outs, you know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> you have a child, so you deal with this all the time. Do you think that that was, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Now that they have taught him that, is he using it or has he used it like more afterwards? Or is that one of the things that you're still kind of? Well, I think that, I think that the, the distinction to make is that when, when you're employing a boundary, you can be using it to keep people away or right. you can be like, you could be using it to keep a person away or you can be using it to keep a thing away hmm. that a person is putting out. Right. And when you're, when you're in a relationship with somebody, um, when I'm in, as a, you know, as a father or in a relationship with my son, um, I need him to understand that there are certain ways, like this is just, um, you ever heard someone call a child precocious? Oh, definitely. right. And so you meet these children who are, who have been hyper socialized, right? They, 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 they have been, it's kind of like um, when, when Levi was uh, a, a baby, uh, when he was younger, I should say, um, he'd see us using a big fork and a big knife and he wanted to use that too. And I said, no, you, you know, you can't, you can't use that yet, right? And what I'm trying to teach him is that everything's a tool. And sometimes you don't have the expertise to use that tool. You haven't been proven to use that. You, you need to learn, you need to have the dexterity, the coordination, the responsibility, mm-hmm. right? As it said, re, you know, responsibility is to be able to respond with ability. He doesn't have the responsibility to deal with a big knife and a big fork mm-hmm. because when you pick it up, it's too heavy. And now as soon as he moves one small movement, the knife goes flying out of his hand, right? This is what we do in that case. This is what he's doing with space, 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 right? Because now it's a weapon because he doesn't know how to wield it. Hmm. He doesn't know how to say, um, I'm being challenged by this. Let me sit with it for a second, (laughs) you know, and can we talk about it? The, what he's doing is he's shirking, like he's running away from it. Hmm. And this, because it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable. Right. And this is what I find that a lot of people in our culture do when it comes to the idea of a boundary. Again, this, you, you said in, in the bio um, uh, about me being an agitator, you know, and it, agitation for me is just mixing things up, just mixing up. You look in a washing machine back in the day, the, the agitator, they call that, right? right? When you brew coffee, you have to agitate it to get the to get the chemical compounds to release so agitation is necessary in order to get to extract all of the juiciness out of something understood right and when you have boundaries when you have too many boundaries when you have boundaries for your back like you it's just you start to use it that way and then there's no mixing up. There's no village. There's no community. People don't stretch. You don't grow. You get to stay, stay where you are. Stay right. where you are. And everybody's else got to respect that. Right. That's you know? what I see. Yeah. yeah. I, know that. I know people just like that. Yeah. Right. This is where I am. Don't get too close to me. I might burn you. Don't say right. that. Talk about this. Nope. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. What, what kind of way is that to live? It's very sterile. You know, it's, it's very, it does not increase your, your uh, biodiversity. <laughs> you Great know? word. I'll be using that in Scrabble. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You know how they say um, getting uh, now, like we're, we're more and more sick because hand sanitizer, right? Constantly doing these things that sterilize us, mm. that, that barrier us, that keep us between, that keep something between us and the environment that we're in. <clears throat> right. right? The environment that we're in is is meant to grow us Hmm. that's a great point man that's a great great point i'm so glad you said that um 
I want to open it up to some questions if there are any. This is a this is a really loaded topic. There's a lot of things going on with this. Does anyone have anything that they'd like to add or ask or anything like that? This is a boy. Mm, this topic in general. No one. Okay. So we'll keep flowing unless someone has a question. Oh, Hello there. Dorel. There we, oh, and then CC. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Good morning, Daniel. Good morning. Good morning, <clears throat> Uh, well, you know, this is an awesome conversation, and it's uh, it's somewhat of a slippery slope, right? Mm -hmm. People need triggering, that. perhaps. Huh? <laughs> triggering for some, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, and uh, people do need boundaries, and you're pointing to that people use boundaries as a defense mechanism, as a way uh, instead of a way to protect their integrity. And what's uh, dicey in this conversation is that we want to point to that without uh, falling victim to you weaponizing boundaries ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, <clears throat> weaponize boundaries of bad people. Uh, maybe, maybe they're not. Uh, it's, I, I think it's innate in all of us to use boundaries as a way to stay separate and to be special as individuals. <clears throat> and you're, you're, you're totally right, Daniel. It separates us from the village and the collective. And uh, so when it comes to using boundaries in a way that connects us to the village, what would you say is the way to use boundaries that connects us to the collective? That's such a great question. And I feel like there are a couple of questions in there, but to me, um, you know, as I said uh, to someone recently about this, a boundary should be something that you can use as a tool to make your life better. So you mentioned People use it uh, because they, we want to be special. And, you know, what I would push back on with that is that if we can't be, if we can't be unique and be who we are in a group of people, among a group of people, if we have to isolate in order to, to experience that uniqueness, then maybe we don't really know who we are. And because I think a lot of people get, they do get that, that sort of, uh, they get lost in the shuffle in a group, right? They, they, so what I would say is that the connecting point of boundaries is that boundaries come, oh, you know, the, the cool, the interesting about boundaries is that you don't really know you've hit one until you hit it. And people don't walk around telling you, okay, these are all my boundaries, <laughs> right? So until you hit it, you don't know that you've hit it. To me, what's great about that is that when you hit it, it's an opportunity for a conversation. It's an opportunity for transparency. Now, maybe you don't take that moment then. You know, I think Brene Brown talked about uh, one marble at a time with people, right? Um, so it's not, it's not that you've got to bare your soul in every one of these moments. But instead of looking at a boundary as something that separates you from somebody, maybe it's, it's something that you can relate to somebody over. Because the boundary got put there for a reason. And whatever story it is that facilitated you creating that boundary, maybe the person standing in front of you has a story that relates to that. But as I'm fond of saying all the time, without transparency, you cannot, you, you just can't, you can't, tr with transparency, you take a risk, right? You take a risk that you're gonna cause pain and that you're going to share pain. But until you share pain, you don't give the other person an opportunity to empathize. Then compassion comes in. Then relationship starts. It's deep. It's really deep. Man, my goodness. Thank you, Sorrel, for that great question. It's incredible. Wow. Cece. Good morning. I, Good morning. Awesome topic. Um, what, I, what I'm gathering for myself is um, whenever I'm triggered by somebody else's, um, you know, inflection 
or violation, quote unquote, of boundaries, I start looking at myself. It's because the only way I could recognize it is because I it triggers a memory. So now I'm looking for an opportunity to expose myself so that I become unoffendable. So somebody else's behavior does not offend me in any way because it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with them. It has a lot to do with how I'm reacting to what they are doing or what they're not doing or saying. So instead of protecting myself, I'm facing it now. So I am not going to be offended by their violation because they probably don't know. Or if they do know, they have not been put in a, you know, in a, in a corrective measure to where they would change themselves. See, I'm not in the change in business. I believe God is. So instead of me putting up all these barriers, because all it does is keep me from those type of people, I'm now communicating in a way where I'm no longer offended because it's their problem, not mine. And I don't want to make their problem mine. Am I yeah. saying that the right way? Thank you. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's a wrong way to say it. I, I love I love what you're saying, because really what you're getting at is the idea that a boundary, again, is more for you than for somebody else. So it's not something you're enacting and, and sort of projecting out at somebody else, but it's for you. But what you're talking about is taking the opportunity to recognize that, again, the boundary, we don't go around, you know, professing them all the time, but we know we recognize when one's been crossed. So taking the opportunity to ask yourself, ooh, there's a trigger, ooh, there's a boundary. Why is that there? You know, hmm. I think is what you're saying. I, or at least I'm getting that from what you're saying. Excellent. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you, Cece. Ron Bertrand. Man, man, man. You know, I'm going to try to do laser here. I just want to <laughs> acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge you for bringing Daniel, Daniel here. I mean, brother dropped some good nugget this morning, man. This is great. I mean, my man, 50 grand, 50 grand, man. Yes. See what, what, uh, what I'm catching here. It helped me understand something that I've been dealing with, with my 20, 24 plus year old daughter, you know, oh, that wow. limiting that when you say limiting the ability to grow the village. It's it's really a very interesting point because that age, I mean, you know, 24 year old that still live at home, you know, like daddy, give me space, you know, so it's like that limiting ability to grow, but still don't don't really want to build the village that may stop the building of the village. So I'm with like, OK. A new tool to understand that that word boundary. I mean, and I and I like the way you take it from your daughter, I mean, from your son to, you know, at that age, who doesn't really understand, you know, the power of the word. And then I'm taking it on the road, you know, when you guys, you know, looking at at, at, a, at an interstate road and looking at the, the guardrail that's on the road. So the guardrail is there as a boundary. If you go over it, you're going to be in the ditch. If it's not there, you're going to be in the ditch. So, yeah. so that's why I'm just making all this analogy to really get to the, to, to really gather the word. I mean, this is a fantastic uh, uh, word and, and it's really being misused, but, you know, in this uh, forum that we're here, you know, it just opened up such a very uh, interesting way for us to use this word and knowing the, the the importance of it. Thank you so very much for bringing this forward. This is this is good. I, I really enjoyed that conversation. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for sharing that, Ron. Yeah, thank you, man. Is that Rashida's hand up? She got a a, a dark hand. I like that. I love my yeah, I didn't hand. See it. I love my hand. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Let's do one more of Rashida before we run out of time. Anyway, Daniel, thank you so much for coming back. Trust oh, me, Daniel, you. you've been in my conversation on Friday with my sister, Laura Clark. <laughs> you your name and 
when I saw you this morning, I called and said, Daniel is back. <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> thank you so much for the topic. Thank, thank you, you so much. And why I say that is because in, I realized that we as individuals go out and travel and stuff <laughs> like that. And we want our space. And trust me, one of the things that take me back is when I was coming from China, uh, four years ago, they sit me next to someone. And I didn't want this person to be sitting next to me. So the body <laughs> was broken. And yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, I have yeah. 18 hours to sit next <laughs> to this person. So yeah. trust me, your point this morning took me back to my trip from China. <laughs> oh, I love that story. That's such a great example. Thank you for that. Thank, Thank you for sharing you that. Thank yeah. you so much. I really appreciate you making the point this morning. And, and we need to really resonate with each other in the bondage because we have, you know, you can feel when somebody is in your spirit space. Mm -hmm. You can literally see that person coming too close to you. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for the topic. Yeah. And with that, I'm out, but I'm still here. <laughs> man, man, oh man. Excellent, excellent topic as always. I wish we had more time. We got to do like a day where the Daily Huddle has an hour, like a special topic hour day. That would be really fun. But we'll talk about that later because I feel like, man, it's always those juices, right? I don't know. Um, and how you doing, Gio? I don't want to not recognize you. How you feeling, my brother? Um, so we're going to close now. Our time has come. It's just incredible where the time goes. You look, boop, boop, and it's done. It's completely done. But, hey, Chase. Yes. I, I, uh, I hate to do this, but I'd love to prompt you with a question, uh, uh -huh. you know, uh, just to give you the opportunity to close it up. Uh, has it ever dawned on you that maybe as an individual, I use boundaries with myself, for myself? Like the boundaries I set up for yeah. some version of me that wants to go in one direction, but uh, the other doesn't, I go, uh-uh, we ain't going there. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 uh, this just popped up for me. I had so to true, say. yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Absolutely. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you for being here, brother. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad that people got some value out of it. Mm-hmm. It was great, great So we're going to close out now. Uh, Terrell, you're good? Yep. All okay. set. Great. Thank you, brother. So once again, another successful talk. This is what we do here. We're so good at it now. I'm so happy to be in this group because it uh, really makes your brain flow and you get things out and you go out into the world. And you can use these tools. So thank you so much, Daniel, for being here, as always. And as we always do, we're going to close out with our tenants because I believe these are the tenants that will help us fluidly move through life in a way that is just, just a little bit better than we thought we could be. Of course, live, live out loud, take more chances, connect with more people, love, love to your capacity, right? loving out loud love more people if you can <laughs> eat mostly plant-based because that is what's going to give your body what it needs to have the strength to do different things of course we always talk about giving give more of yourself give more of the things that you have excess for give more to the people that may be asking you for something that you have just give it it's so good it's so so good also sleep and i'm speaking to myself as well please Get your six to eight hours. It makes a huge, huge difference in the fluidity of life and the forward motion. And of course, please check yourself before you wreck yourself. This has been The Daily Huddle. I'm Chase Steele Gray. I appreciate you all. Spectacular job, everyone. We will see you once again tomorrow on The Daily Huddle. And uh, tell 100 people, tell them to all come here tomorrow. We'll be here. Have a spectacular day. Be the best you that you possibly can be. Peace and we're blessings. Out. Peace and blessings. It's Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, family. Thank you, Stan. One love, guys. One love. Thank you, guys. I'm in town tomorrow, then, Sorrell. See you live soon, brother. All right. All right. Man. Take care. Peace. Chase, hit me.